go to the in the Leicester. Uh, we're into the last 64 stage now of Players' Championship 16 Outside. on the PDC Pro Tour. And this is a matchup between this man, John O'Shea, the Joker, John's won the who's ball. won the ball and will have the darts in the first leg against Ricardo Pietrexco, the John's German. The throw first. Now, both these players enjoyed 6-4 wins in the first round. Pietrexco over uh, Damon Mole and O'Shea over Bradley Brooks. Now, the score lines were identical, but I'd have to say that Pietrexco was more impressive than O'Shea in his opening victory, and that's probably why he's going off favourite in this match, even though he's against the darts. Although, to be fair to O'Shea, his best period of play in that match against Brooks was at the back end, but he still had to rely a little bit on Brooks busting 120 in what turned out to be the final leg of the match. But nonetheless, this is... A the same day, but a different match, and the outcome may be completely different in terms of levels of performance. 100. Let's see what happens. In also in this segment of the draw, Damon Hetter is waiting to play against Owen Bates, who we've just seen demolish Devon Peterson six legs 96. to one. Six. So in this opening leg on the O'Shea darts. One hundred and thirty. It's closely four. contested. Small lead to the man known as Pikachu. Fifty-six. And O'Shea first to have finished, but Pietrexco should be down to a much more manageable checkout, you would think, from one eight four. Fifty. Well, I say that he's come up dry in terms of big trebles. No finish now for the Irishman. Four now, 125. Is he going to go ball first? He is. So that leaves 100. Treble 20 now would leave tops. Right in the top corner. Now tops. What Game a finish shot. that is from Ricardo Pietrexco. Ninety-six. Well, that was a terrific way to kick off with that one-two-five out shot from the German. And now O'Shea, 60. who had the darts in that opening leg, finds himself on the back foot early doors in this contest. One hundred and eighty. And backs up the breaker throw by hitting a maximum on his first leg with the darts. 59. And this was the kind of quality we saw him display in the first match against Damon Mole today, Petretsko, where he bossed the game from the get-go, really. Got an early breaker throw in that match as well. And nursed the lead all the way to a 6-4 success. O'Shea's victory 90. over Brooks by 6-4 was much more nip and tuck. 16. Double 16 now, and that's 70. not far away from 2-0, but you think 2-0 is coming pretty shortly because O'Shea here is nowhere near the finishing line and nowhere near close enough to take advantage of the missed doubles, so Pietrexco for 2-0. That's bent the wire inwards. And Game that's shot. a perfect adjustment. He leads 2-0. Paul Nicholson is now here. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon, Rod. Great to be back here on stream number two. I'll be interested to see what we get from Ricardo Pietrescu because his stock is rising in world darts and he's becoming more comfortable with these kinds of challenges. And... I think the likelihood of him winning boards now is, is better than ever. Yeah, his ranking now is 68th, but one hundred and four. he's shown a lot of improvement in the last 12 months or so and looks like a guy that's moving upwards. 
a team. Yeah, we're looking at a young man who has progressed at a nice pace over the last three or four years. Seen as one of the fruits of the home nation qualifiers in German European Four. tour events. Four. Got a taste for it. Decided to push himself at Q schools and things like that. And then when he made his first semi-final on the Pro Tour last year, it was at that moment where his stock got to a new high. And this year, it's the first time we've talked about him in a race for a match play or something of that ilk. And because that race is over for him now, we have to think that maybe because of his continuing form, we might even see him at the World Grand Prix, Rod. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the thing about the Pro Tour, isn't it? One race for a big tournament, the match play you just alluded to, ends. But the races just keep on coming, don't they? The Grand Prix, 95. which is here at the Morningside Arena in October in Leicester. And then, you know, World Championship places are up for grabs. So, 20 leaves the bullseye here. Well, that treble leaves double five for 3-0. O'Shea has got a two-dark combo, but is John O'Shea going to get a look at that? No, he is not. 125 out in the first leg, and then a 130 out in the third. Both for a break of throw. My goodness, he's 3 0 up and halfway to the winning line already. I mean, time's gone by. If you'd have put a German dart player against an Irish dart player, the Irish player would have been a massive favourite. But this is a mark of how the sport of darts has changed. O'Shea, one of the godfathers of darts in Ireland. And that World Masters victory back nice. in 2019, his definitive career highlight. Made a final on the tour last year. And did make his way to a first PDC World Championship at the end of 2022. Whoa. But you think it's just a matter of time before Pietreczko makes his way to the Palace. Well, you were mentioning, Paul, the uh, race for the World Grand Prix, which Whoa. the... 180. Business end of that tournament is in October, as I mentioned, here in Leicester. And he's right on the cusp of the qualifying positions at the moment with plenty of time to move forward. He's, he's 17th on that race with 16 to qualify from outside the world's top 16 on the main world ranking. And he's just behind Kim Hybrex and just behind Steve Beaton and Chris Doby. You know, and these are you know, regular names in big tournaments, aren't they? Hybrex, Beaton and Doby. So he's mixing it with those kind of players, and he's in every chance of shoving himself fully into that race. And of course, a deep run today would do the power of good in that regard. It's not even that many nice events deep between deep. now and the World Grand Prix. That's in the beginning of, of October. We've got two players' championship events at the end of August. And when they're over, it's a month 41. between the cutoff for the World Grand Prix and when those events in Germany and Hildesheim are completed. This is doing his chance of getting into that race the world of good. And when you're winning 4-0 against someone like John O'Shea, your stock and your confidence continue to grow. And he's winning 4-0 without John O'Shea having a sniff. Well, that's why. You only look at the averages. 84. And I've seen some people put in big numbers today. James Wade was excellent in round one. But we have seen some people... Put in bigger numbers already. Richie Edhouse, 105.7 against Ross Smith. Another good performance from Ross Smith that winds up being a defeat. Mm. It's amazing how many times that's been happening to him. 100. It's a good job Darts has not done a weight class, Rod, because if it was these two going up against each other in a weight class, it would be a mismatch. John's a big lad, always has been. 180. But Ricardo is about the same weight as a straw. But he punches on the dartboard like a heavyweight, especially in a match like this. He does indeed. We do have somebody into 80. round three by the name of Cameron Menzies. He's taking out Jeffrey Desvan. And he took care of Kim Hybrechts earlier, who 99. actually is the next name on the list in that World Grand Prix race for Ricardo Pietrachko. So things are aligning for him here today so far. Yeah. 
I would not be surprised at all if we saw him back at this venue for the World Grand Prix in that very different format, of course, the double in and then double out format, quirky format of the World Grand Prix. It takes some adjusting too. Eight. I was always a big fan of it because we used to play a lot of it in the northeast of England. But some people don't like it. And no, they don't. Just this morning, I didn't realise that Michael Smith is not a fan of it. Game shot. But John O'Shea is a fan of that. Nice mark of respect there for the former world master from Ricardo Piotrzko. Are you a big fan of Pokemon, Rod? With uh, this man nicknamed Pikachu? I'm a bit old for that before. <laughs> Sorry, but... So you probably haven't heard his walk-on song, which is no. the theme song from Pokemon. Well, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit I wouldn't recognise if I heard it, Paul. <laughs> but I hope we get the chance to hear his walk on song on TV events because I've enjoyed watching him over the last couple of days. Yeah, he's a good player. And the, the theme song is Got to Catch Them All. Well, in this game, it's you've got to hit them all. Well, he's certainly hitting most of them, that's for sure, with an average of around 110 at this point in proceedings and a 4-1 lead despite John O'Shea's 1-1-8 checkout in the last leg, and that was the third three-figure outshot we've seen in the match, and two of those have come from Petrexco with the 1-2-5 and the 1-3-0. Oh, well, look at this now. Lovely. It is relentless from the German. That's seven, one, seven, one to go with three maximums. 100. And it left 94. Could be an 11 dart leg. Have to settle for 12. Can't find the treble there either. I do see a lot of German players on 76 Three, going for that treble 16. It's what we like to call the Menser effect because he played a lot of darts in Germany as well. Everybody learned the 76 checker from him because he loved double 14. But if Ricardo keeps doing what he's doing, he might get the best average of his career. Game that hit takes him to 5-1. And I can tell you from the databases that we have available to us that Ricardo's personal best was hit this year of 105.61 against Martin Schindler in a Players' Championship in Barnsley. 60. And if you go a little bit deeper than that, if you need proof that he's playing the best darts of his career, of his top 100. eight in his personal bests, seven of them have been hit this season. Say no more. 43. Well, this is a darting demolition job here, and no mistake. From the moment he hit the 125 out shot in the first leg, it's been one way traffic here. 100. And John O'Shea has been very firmly parked on the hard shoulder, watching Petrexco rattle along at his pace. Oh, that's a good counter from. The Irishman, but he needs a lot more of those, you'd feel. This is just a leg on his own darts, and he's going to be vulnerable to any number of chances, you'd think, from Pietrzko. 140. Just when John thinks, right, I'm going to get you this time, he comes back with a two-trouble visit and gets to the finish first. And there's a slight Fear. smile on the face of O'Shea there, as if to say, do you know what? This just isn't going to happen today. He's too good. Mm. Double 18 here, would have left the bullseye. John was half expecting him to hit that. 25. Considering what he's seen on the outer ring as well from Ricardo. Another there. So it's double 18 for the match coming in here for Ricardo Petrexco. And a quite brilliant performance and a resounding drubbing of John O'Shea by six legs to one. That was brilliant from Pikachu. It really was. Right from the first leg when he got on top with the one two five, he added another three figure out shot to that 130 in the third leg. He fired in maximums and he has knocked out John O'Shea and moves on into the last 32. Highly impressive. 6-1 to Pikachu.